so this is going to be sort of a sit down and let's talk kind of video or actually not really let's talk because you know you're in there and I'm like great you know what I mean if you have any questions leave a comment I'll answer all of them I'm or try to I mean I'm pretty small I can answer all of them um, I'll try to hit most topics that I can or most questions that you may have in this video so stay tuned because this is gonna be a ride <laughs> I just want to start out with yesterday I was diagnosed with narcolepsy without cataplexy. Shocker. Yeah, shocker. I wrote this I wrote this down because <laughs> there was like there's no way I'm gonna memorize this. It says narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder that affects the brain's ability to control the sleep wake cycle. Went on to like different types of narcolepsy and I have type 2 narcolepsy. Um, which is narcolepsy without cataplexy, so I do not lose muscle control. So that's basically what that means. I've, I've kind of known for a while that I probably have narcolepsy, but I wasn't officially diagnosed until yesterday when I had a sleep study. So what they did at the sleep study, I went to this hospital at 8 p.m. That was them testing for sleep apnea the night before. And then the next morning they'd test for narcolepsy, making me take five naps and testing how I do when I nap, like what goes on in my brain, like my sleep cycles and stuff. And how they know where I'm at when I'm sleeping is they attach all of these wires all over my scalp, on my heart, to wires on my legs. I also had a thing on my finger to show my oxygen levels when I slept. It was really uncomfortable. I actually had a really hard time falling asleep the first night. Usually when I sleep, I, it's in my own bed. There's not a camera on me. People aren't watching me sleep and monitoring how I sleep. So normally I'll go to sleep uh, pretty fast. I'll lay my head on the bed, I'm out. Um, that night I just kind of laid, I felt like I was laying there for like 40 minutes trying my hardest to go to sleep but I just couldn't because it was so uncomfortable. Like I had wires glued on my scalp, like with glue, like on my hair. It was not fun. <laughs> it was not fun. Yeah, I posted a picture the next day of me just kind of like taking a selfie with all the wires on me because I thought it was kind of funny. And I kind of did get memed. I, I think it was classy. I retweeted it and it was like, this is the final boss you have to be <laughs> before you can have AirPods. I thought that was funny. So I was there from 8 p.m. to about 4 p.m. the next day. I did not test positive for sleep apnea, so I do not have sleep apnea, thank goodness. I absolutely hated, hated, hated testing for narcolepsy because what they do is... That this MSLT is a test we use to diagnose narcolepsy. So every two hours, we give them a nap. And we just do nothing except measure the brain waves and see how long it takes them to go to sleep. We now return to your regular programming. So a full night's rest, after two hours, you lay down, you sleep for 20 minutes, and then they wake you up. And goodness, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hated it so much because it was like right when I'm laying down, finally getting some rest, then they wake me up. And I'm just like, oh, how fast do I fall asleep? And they told me a normal person will fall asleep anywhere between 8 to 20 minutes. This would be a normal person. So they're taking maybe 15 minutes to go to sleep, 16, maybe 15. I fell asleep in two minutes. <laughs> Each time that was my average, I fell asleep within two minutes. And most of them are averaging about three minutes. So it's a really, really severe sleepiness. The minute they get horizontal, they're out cold. A normal person will go into REM sleep at about like an hour, maybe 90 minutes of sleeping. They'll go into the REM sleep and REM sleep is the dream cycle. That's the that's the point in your sleep cycle where you dream. But people with narcolepsy, we go into it immediately. And the first time that dreaming sleep occurs, in other words, about a little under 90 minutes in. What's really interesting here is that they go to sleep very quickly and within about five minutes, they're having their first dreaming sleep their first REM sleep period. And we also have excess REM sleep. A normal person will have 20 to 25% REM sleep. I had 33% REM sleep. That's over the limit. That's like, hey, this girl has narcolepsy. So all the symptoms are matching up and that's how I got my official diagnosis. Um, my official diagnosis is narcolepsy without cataplexy. Sleep paralysis. Let me talk about sleep paralysis. Oh. I love tweeting about how I have sleep issues and people are like, oh my God, have you ever had sleep paralysis? I got that a few times, it's really scary. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah, oh yeah, I've gotten a bunch of sleep paralysis, like a bunch. First time I ever got sleep paralysis, I was 11. I was falling asleep and then I woke up and I like looked at my room and it was like, 
it was bright because it was during the daytime and I was like, I, I just couldn't move. And I was just like, what the heck is going on? I just remember thinking how cool it was. Like I was like, oh, that was so cool. I'm 21, 10 years later and I'm just like, oh my God, I freaking hate sleep paralysis. It's not scary for me. It's more just kind of like annoying in a way because I get it very, very often. I get it a couple times a week, sometimes up to like three or four times a week. I get it constantly. There's sleep paralysis. These folks that are epileptics have a lot more of it than most people. Probably most people will have had a bit of sleep paralysis in their lifetime. Sometimes if they've been up for a very long time and they have it just as they're going into sleep or partying too much or whatever, most people will have had that once or twice in a lifetime. Narcolepsy patients get it every day practically. I don't sleep on my back anymore. I sleep on my side, but I can still get sleep paralysis on my stomach and my side, which really sucks. Um, but something that I get more often than that is hallucinations and I've I've talked about my hallucinations on Twitter and people just kind of like look at me and they're just like, what the fuck? Just like looking at my tweet like, what the fuck? Because I remember I tweeted something about like some auditory hallucination that I got and I thought it was hilarious and everyone's just like, are you okay? And I'm just like, yes, that's normal stuff. It happens. It happens. I probably have narcolepsy. That's why. It explains everything. Um, so yeah, that is also another big symptom of narcolepsy, which is hypnopompic and hypnogognic. Hallucination. I hope I said that right. Hypnagogic. Hypnagogic. Hypnopompic. I don't. I don't know. I just know that hypnagogic hallucinations are when you're falling asleep, and hypnopompic are when you're waking up. And I get the. I get them both. What those are like. Most of the time, they're not scary. I am pretty blessed to like not have scary dreams or have scary hallucinations. I mean, I do get them sometimes, and it is really, really scary. But most of the time, they're just kind of just like I just kind of like look at the hallucination. I'm just like tilt my head and I'm just like. Okay, um, what? If you just think about narcolepsy hallucinations as extremely vivid and also multimodal, they're not just visual, they're auditory. And in fact, if the average psychiatrist sees one of these for the first time, he comes out of the interview and said, huh, that guy's not schizophrenic, he's faking it. Nobody hallucinates like that. It's a far more vivid hallucination than any psychiatric patient ever. I think it was like my last night at the sore house. I was sleeping and then I just remember rolling over like in the middle of the night and like waking up and I just like look and I just see a bunch of pizza boxes just float through my room and then I just kind of like look at it like okay I'm like oh my god guys you'll never guess what I just saw <laughs> I just kind of like to joke about it a bunch because it's just kind of like it's a part of my life now um, the last time I hallucinated was the night before the sleep study so literally like two days ago I woke up after sleeping for a bit and I just opened my eyes and I just see like this it's probably like maybe this big it's always like right in front of my eyes when I wake up it it was a horse it was like a wired horse like a like a lawn decoration and it was just floating in the air and I just kind of like like I'd wake up and I'd like start to see it and then once I start to see it like I'll open my eyes like what am I really seeing this and then it eventually like Maybe like two seconds later it starts to fade. I always try to stare at it because I'm like, I want to get every single detail. Like, what the heck am I seeing? There's no way I'm seeing this. Like, this isn't real. Like, but it is. It's, uh, my mind is still in REM sleep when I wake up. So it's kind of like, it's in a dream state. So I'm seeing stuff because I'm kind of dreaming. It's really weird. Other examples of my waking up hallucinations. I'll get to my going to sleep ones. Those are, those are fun. One time I was actually in this room. I was going to take a nap. So I laid down and I kept the lights on because I'm like, if I keep the lights on, it'll be easier to like wake up. Fell asleep, woke up, and I just looked at the ceiling and I just saw, they look like, I, I'm pretty sure they were ants. They were just bugs. Like seriously, thousands just crawling towards me, like on the ceiling, like crawling in my direction. And I just remember looking up and I'm just like, Oh fuck, I have to clean this up. Can you tell I'm over it? They eventually faded from my vision, but I was just like, holy crap, what the heck? I also hallucinate spiders a lot. Like I'll usually wake up and I'll see like a web and I'll see a spider in it. And it doesn't scare me, I'm just kind of like, I just stare at it. I'm just like, okay. I, I, I believe that spiders are homie. Spiders don't really scare me, but if it was any other bug, like a centipede, I'd just be like, fuck. My first time, getting the hallucinations, I'd wake up and I'd see, um, at first I thought they were spider webs, but, um, well, 
to draw this for you guys. I got some paper, but this is what I see when I wake up. Okay, hopefully this pen works. Okay. This, this is what I'd see. I'd wake up and it'd be floating right above me, but it'd be like bigger than this. It'd be a lot bigger than this. And I'd just stare at it, cause I'm like, what? What is this? I, I don't know, but this is always, most of the time when I hallucinate, this is exactly what I see. Another crazy one is I was sleeping at a hotel and uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and um, I just see a piggy bank with wings flying right over above me into the wall. And I was just like, that was cool as fuck. <laughs> I thought, I always think they're super cool, but they're also kind of annoying. I mean, it's not really harmful, I guess. The hallucinations, before I sleep, when I'm laying in bed trying to get some sleep, um, they're not, they're not visual because I, I have my eyes closed, they're auditory. So I hear voices. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna like say this and just be like, I promise I'm normal, but I hear voices. I'll hear like sounds, very, very vivid sounds. Like in your head, you can think up a person, another person's voice. You can think up any sound in your head pretty much. But it's like these sounds are so vivid and sounds so real it's as if someone was right next to you whispering in your ear like something like that's how real they sound so it's like you have your main voice and then you have another voice just kind of like floating around in your head making these other voices and you're like well that is not my voice i did not like think that like that wasn't me that happens pretty often auditory hallucinations same night same night before my sleep study i was laying there i was thinking about the sleep study when i was laying down because i'm just like okay i'm just gonna go to sleep and i'm just like thinking about whatever the heck before i go to bed and then i just like notice it wasn't that i realized like the, the voices started it was just like whoa like it was that i realized that while i was thinking all that stuff there was like some lady on an intercom talking. I don't know, I don't know what she was saying. It was really, really muffled. Then I heard like this little boy's voice. When it started, I didn't notice right away. It kind of went on for a bit. And then I'm like, wait, there it is again. And as soon as I like noticed it, like my heart kind of jumped and I like kind of woke up a little bit. When did it start? I don't exactly know when it started. Um, I know I got sleep paralysis for the first time when I was 11 and then by the time I was 14, 15, I started getting sleep paralysis more often, probably like once a month or something like that. I thought it was cool though. I was just like, yeah, because no one at the time had experienced sleep paralysis. By this time and age, pretty much everyone that I meet has experienced it a few times. But I know that sleep paralysis can exist without narcolepsy. So even like normal people, healthy brained people can experience it because it is a symptom of sleep deprivation. It onset maybe 14 or 15 years old and every year since it just started getting worse and worse it's okay I th I'm gonna say 17 um, that I realized something was wrong with me because that was a end of high school and towards the end of high school I started missing a lot of school I always explain this to people like before I even knew about the narcolepsy thing like I'm like oh I miss a lot of school in high school but like it wasn't because I was a bad kid I just always would skip school so I get sleep and just kind of like joke that I'm a very lazy person and I oversleep a lot. Little did I know I actually have a disorder. <laughs> I did pretty okay for the first part of college, but then I got to a point where I could not stay awake in class. Uh, during lectures, I'd literally pass out, even during like labs and when I'd be working on something in science. Like I'd have a night where I get seven, eight hours of sleep and I go to school the next morning during the lecture and I just feel myself like drifting off and all the whole class I'd just be fighting myself trying to not let myself go to sleep and I just I just remember this one point where I looked over around at everybody and everybody else was like fine they were awake and I I didn't know what was wrong with me like I, I couldn't stay awake like it like got to a point where like I'd be sitting there and I'd, like I'd start tearing up because I couldn't stay awake. I'd be listening to the lecture, taking notes, and I'd be trying everything to keep myself awake. I'd just keep writing, listening, doodling, just trying to keep myself, my like body moving, knowing that I'm paying to be there, and I couldn't even really be there. That 
was something that really like upset me. I started taking online classes so um, off campus I'd be able to do them anytime I wanted on my computer. That helped a ton. I'd end up going to campus like once a week because slowly all of my classes turned into I can do this online but I also really miss being in regular school like I miss walking around campus and then, then I got to a semester where I was doing everything online and then yeah I just I couldn't do it the main symptom of narcolepsy is excessive daytime sleepiness that's actually what I went to the doctor for I was like hey I'm tired my blood sugar like pretty much anything else that can make me like tired but it turns out it's sleep disorder. That was like the last thing on my list to test. Um, we also thought it could be depression. Oh yeah, funny story. When I was 17, I had depression and I was seeing a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist asked about my sleeping habits. And I told him, I was like, I sleep a bunch. I sleep like sometimes up to 15 hours a night. Um, I'm always tired. I get sleep paralysis often. And he just, he was, he was just like, oh yeah, that's just depression. You're sleeping a lot because you're depressed. And I was just like, okay. So my job now is I do streaming and I play video games. And it may, like, before anyone's like, oh, that's why you have sleep issues. It's because you play video games. I just want everyone to know, like, I've always played video games. But towards the end of high school, I kind of stopped playing video games. And that's when I still had the symptoms i didn't really start playing a lot of video games until i was like like late 18 almost 19 when i started getting back into playing video games and streaming and doing youtube so i've had these problems before any of that started so i do, I do want to clarify like it, i don't think it's that's what caused it i mean it probably isn't helping my sleep schedule but i mean i can't fix that anyway i get what i call episodes I guess um I don't really know what to call them they're not like regular narcoleptic episodes with like the cataplexy like that's not it like I had my first one about two years ago and I've had a few more since then I don't get them that often be like okay I'm going to sleep lay down sleep for two hours wake up and sleep paralysis I shrug myself out of sleep paralysis I turn to the other side, go back to sleep. 30 minutes later, I wake up from like a really, really scary dream. And I wake up and I'm in sleep paralysis again, go back to sleep, finally sleep for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, wake up, I'm in sleep paralysis again, hallucinating things that will scare you like dark shadows, that kind of stuff, even though like you know it's in your mind, but it's like, why, why am I getting it? so many times in one night. And I'd go back to sleep, wake up again, I'm in sleep paralysis. And it gets to the point where it's like, I want to sleep so bad because I'm so exhausted. All I wanna do is sleep and I just wanna turn off the REM cycle. I don't want to dream, I don't want to go into sleep paralysis. And I'll just lay there really, really tired and I'm like, I can't go back to sleep because the same thing's gonna happen and it'll happen all night. And that's what I, like, I'll keep telling myself and I'll try it again and then it'll keep happening. It's like, you want to sleep, but you can't, like, you'll, you'll just keep waking up in sleep paralysis. My mind is constantly in a state of, we need sleep, you need a rest, and I'll get sleep deprivation symptoms, hallucinating and falling right into REM immediately in sleep paralysis. Have I ever fallen asleep while driving? Yeah, I have. For very, for very, very short seconds not really fall asleep just kind of have like those really long blinks when you're driving because you're so tired and like I'd be driving in one lane and I'll wake up and I'm in the other lane and that's really really scary like I could actually like I know it's weird to say that you're happy that you're diagnosed with narcolepsy um it's not that I'm like happy about having it it's like happy that I'm finally diagnosed and I can get help and I can get treatment worst thing about narcolepsy is the episodes that I have when I just want to sleep, but I can't seem to turn off the REM cycle. Probably the best thing about narcolepsy, it's not it's not sleeping, it's not napping all the time, I promise. It's actually 
the dreams that I get. I have very, very, very vivid dreams. Um, sometimes I lucid dream. That's uh, pretty common for me. But the best thing about having these super vivid dreams is that most of the time I don't have nightmares. It's really rare for me to have a nightmare. And, well, I'll have nightmares, but like, it's not that like it'll actually scare me, if that makes sense. Like, the times that it actually does scare me is really rare. I can't say that I don't ever get nightmares. I do. It's like I'll, I'll be sleeping and just having like a normal dream fall off the boat into the water. And then this is when it like... Like, it's so vivid. Like, I, I still remember the exact scene that that happened. This is when the lucid dreaming will start to come into effect. Like, I'll just hear my thought process. Like, I'll hear myself think, oh no, um, there better not be sharks around here or something. And as soon as I say anything, it'll appear. As soon as I said there better not be sharks around me, there were sharks surrounding me. And then I was like, oh no. Like, it was, like, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna get eaten alive. But then... For some reason, I just like snapped out of it. I was just like, wait, I'm dreaming. This isn't real. I wouldn't be deep sea fishing. <laughs> what? And so I'm like, okay, this is a dream. I can do whatever I want. That's always my first thought once I realize I'm dreaming. I'm like, I can do whatever I want. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna jump back on the boat, which is completely like physically not possible, but I'm gonna jump from the water back into the boat. And sure enough, I did like a fish. I just, just like back onto the boat, safe. And then I woke up like right after that because I guess my mind was like going crazy because I'm like, oh, I'm awake and it woke me up. <laughs> yeah, that's how most of dreams that start to turn scary go. My lucid dreams are actually pretty boring because, you know, I, I guess I'm just not very creative. As soon as I realize I'm in a dream, I'm just like, oh, I could do anything. I could, I could, I could see anything. And, and immediately I'm just like, I'm gonna fly. And then I'll do a backflip in the air and I'm just flying. And then that's it, like I'm not very creative, which is why I like normal dreaming. Uh, normal dreaming is pretty cool. I have the craziest dreams. Not all of them are lucid though. Really, really vivid, really, really colorful. They always feel real. I, li I, like, I like the dream, I like dreaming, but, but not all the time. <laughs> if you actually watch this long i just want to say thank you so much for just kind of like listening to me bear why are you about to eat oh, oh. it's president bear hello mr president so yeah uh me and bear thank you for watching my video oh, me, oh, listening to me talk about my problems <laughs> pretty much what this video was can you say hi to the camera you haven't made an appearance in one of my videos in a very long time hello you're nine years old next week Say happy birthday to Bear. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, maybe in the future I'll make an updated video on narcolepsy and how my treatments are going. Thanks for watching. I said that already, but thank you for watching. Alright, I'll see you guys later. So, bye!